Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, my beautiful sister and teacher friend, as I'm airing this on December 25th. Oh my goodness, it is Christmas Day. I'm so excited. I hope and pray that you are having a wonderful, wonderful Christmas today so far. Of course, I'm recording this uh, before Christmas. <laughs> actually, I'm actually recording this introduction on the morning of the 24th. But this recording that you're going to hear is from two Christmases ago. And I needed to share this message because it was really powerful. I think you're going to absolutely be moved by it. It really has to do with having you think of what's truly important, what is truly important in your life. And as you hear the story of Mary and Jesus and his birth, there's a perspective that I really want you to listen to that maybe you have not really thought of before, kind of a different perspective. Okay, so I hope and pray that this episode, that this reflection will bless you. And my sister, I wanted to also remind you in case you didn't know, or if you're new around here, by the way, if you're new, welcome. So happy to have you. But if you're new or if you haven't heard the other episodes, I am so, so, so excited because the day is coming in just a few days on Thursday, December 28th, this Thursday, in just a few days. If you're listening to this on Monday, December 25th, or anytime before the 28th of 2023, well, sister, the launch is here. It is coming on Thursday morning, bright and early, and it is going to be so, ex it's going to be so amazing, exciting. Well, launch of what? The launch of my 30-day devotional, first publication ever of Psalm 119, and it is called Love for His Word. And sister, this is unlike any other Psalm 119 devotional you've ever read, if you've ever read any, okay? Any Psalm 119 devotionals. This is something very different. I've placed in themes every day. I've, I've <laughs> analyzed and studied this this book, spend time doing this, make sure that I put them into the right categories and put them in themes for you because it's interesting all these verses can be divided up into various themes, but ultimately the theme is, the ultimate theme is that the word of God is number one. It should be the most important thing in your life and that God loves you above anything else. This message of love, you're going to feel every day that you read this devotional and it's going to be ready for you to purchase on Thursday. Well, here's also some good news. If you want it for free as part of my coaching call, okay, my coaching package that I offered to you. And if you want to know more about that, just go to the intentionalchristianwoman.com and book your free call. And, and I can talk to you a little bit more about that. Or you can ask questions. It's a free call. You can book it, but it is part of it. It's free and it comes in the package. So if you want it for free and you want to get coaching from me and you want to, basically you want to take back your time with God and you want to have a plan that will help you succeed in having an amazing relationship with God to find that peace, that calm in your chaos of life, because that's my goal for you, my sister to find that calm in the chaos because only God can give you that through his word is the number one place. That's where you start. Then sister, go to the intentionalchristianwoman.com, book your call, and I can tell you how you can get this for free. All right, my sister, well, look out for it because I will be airing a special podcast episode on Thursday announcing the launch and with a special little message for you, okay? So I will be having uh, an episode put up on Thursday, so that's a bonus episode. You know, I, I come in here sometimes and put bonus episodes up on Fridays, but this time is going to be on Thursday. I'm super excited, my sister. I can't wait. I can't, can't, can't wait. And if you want to know more if you want to know how you can get this uh, a day early because I'm going to release it a day early for only my Facebook community so if you're in my Facebook community hey girl how are you my sister if you want to go and join the community I'm releasing it a day early there okay so you can get your hands on that copy get ready for the new year 2024 maybe start off your new year this is what I suggest in doing this 30 day devotional so you can get convictions or regain convictions or rekindle your convictions about the word of God so that you can be in your word every day, grow in your relationship with God and get again that peace that no one can give you but the Lord, that he can drive away the enemy's lies every day and that word in your heart will give you the peace and the enemy will, ba will basically be at bay, far, far away. So if you want that, you can go into my community, go to bit.ly forward slash let's be intentional. That's bit. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash let's be intentional. On Thursday, look out for that episode. I will also link 
the I will also put the link where you can purchase this on Thursday, but I will send the link to my community and to my email subscribers. So if you want to get into my email, my newsletter, I do a monthly newsletter at the end of each month. You can also go, you can go to the intentional the intentional and go to the button that says get your free gift. Sign up, you'll get a free gift from me. It's a beautiful, awesome free gift, by the way. And then you can also be subscribed. All right. All right, my sister. Love you. And I pray that this episode encourages you. Let's do it. Are you so busy and overwhelmed that you can't get enough time to connect with God? Are distractions robbing you of your time with Jesus? Is your motivation to spend time in the Word just not what it used to be? Do you want to be more consistent in your personal Bible study? Welcome home, sister. I'm Rosie, a mom, wife, teacher, and devoted disciple of Jesus. And like you, I struggled to stay consistent with my Bible study. When life got busy, I felt so overwhelmed that spending time in God's Word was no longer a priority. In my hardest seasons of life, my motivation to be in the Bible grew weak. I lost my convictions and walked away from God. But by His grace, my faith was restored and with a conviction to never take God's Word for granted again. If you're tired of letting the enemy steal away your time, energy, focus, and motivation, then sister, this podcast is for you. So go reheat your coffee, dust off your journal and Bible, and get ready to take back your time. Today I read Luke, Luke chapter two, and probably many of you might be might already might be reading that because that's a very popular chapter, especially for Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And I want to read to you a few verses. And I'm going to start in verse five. Mary was engaged to Joseph and traveled with Beth w- traveled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby. And while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay because there was no room for them in the the inn. I thought to myself, a bed of hay. She wrapped him up in baby clothes, which is large garments of linen, which is what they would use back then. And kind of like what we use now in a way, sort of, but we put on these kinds of clothes on our babies. Uh, I have three, so I know, but then we swaddled them with like, uh, swaddling is when you take a blanket and you just, you know, cover them up completely and get them tight, get their, get their hands in there. So that it doesn't come out and they feel snugly. And it feels like the womb of, of the, of the mom. So it makes them feel very comfortable. And so that's why you often see babies. If you're not a mom yet, and you're wondering, um, you know, all snuggled up, It, it helps them to feel secure and calms them down. Well, I was thinking about that. That that's something we do, right? But do we if you're a mom, have you laid your baby in hay like because you had nowhere else to lay your baby? Let's think about that for a moment. I was thinking, you know, we you, we we sometimes want so much. We want material things. Even if you think of Christmas as a material holiday, that is not what God meant. This is not what Christmas is about. When I think about Christmas and I can see one of the gifts here that has been open yet, I think about in the in the sense I think about it in the sense that the three kings went to and this is what my husband and I were talking about um, the the going backtracking to the beginning when the three kings came and bought gifts to Jesus uh, they honored him with some expensive gifts and when we think about giving I think about well you know you're sacrificing some money um, to give someone else you love something hopefully meaningful. Um, maybe it doesn't always have to be expensive. I know that we have so much pressure right now to give expensive things, especially to our kids when they're having all these commercials show up. And I just, I'm so against that. Like I give my kids, I've turned that. And I admit I used to be more like, Oh yeah, I'm going to give them the PlayStation or whatever. No, this time it's like, what do you need? If you need something and I can't handle it, I'm going to ask my sisters to pitch in and we'll all get you something right? Uh, that you need. So it's kind of like what we're doing. And, and now my, my, my two boys who are older, they're 18 and 14, they oftentimes are happy with money because then they can get what they want or what they need and or we can get them what they need, depending on the situation. So most of the time, that's what they get. And my little girl, of course, she's a toddler. So she's going to be spoiled rotten by her grandparents, by everyone around her. And that's fine. Like she can enjoy that. But I want her to learn. I want her to learn 
that it's not important the kind of gift you get. It's the sacrifice you make to give the gift. And so kind of like honoring Jesus with the gifts from the three kings, I honor people I love by giving them something. Maybe either I spend time putting together or I, um, I you know, sacrifice some po- pocket money or whatever it was that I sacrificed, especially now being that we are in this um, where I'm working full time and my husband's a full time student. We switched. Right. He was he helped me be a full time mom for a while. And now I'm switching up with him and helping him uh, do this, complete his program, which he started some time ago. Uh, So going back to um, what the meaning of Christmas is, is the birth of Jesus. Uh, But we have to remember that when we do these things, for example, the tree, you know, tree, usually it's not it's I don't I was telling my husband, I'm like, I don't think there were these kinds of tree where Jesus was born. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. (laughs) And um, he was like, you know what? A tree can represent the tree of life, which the Bible talks about, right? The tree of life. And I'm like, yeah, that's so true. So you can you can see these things in a different way, um, in a way that reflects and honors God. Um, but always remember that we are here to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And always remember that our Lord, our the Son of God, our Lord Jesus, was born very, very humble circumstances in a manger no hotel room, no fancy anything. He was laid on, the baby boy was laid on some hay. And that was the son of God laying on hay because there was nowhere else to lay him. Let's think about it when we want that extra thing or when we think, when we compare ourselves to someone else. Oh, well, I want to have this. And why do they have that? And I don't. And that's not good, but I know we all can or have done it, can tend to do it or have done it. And we have to be very cautious and careful and remember that if the son of a God was laid on hay, do we really need more than that? And so many more people in this world are in so much more need than we are, especially if you're living here in this first world country, the United States, where I'm recording this, if you're watching me internationally. We have so much. Yeah, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher salary. It's not a lot, but guess what? It's still a lot, a lot compared to so many others that don't have. I have a home, a shelter, a place to live in. It's not the biggest home. It's not. It's old. (laughs) It's, It's got issues, but it's a home nonetheless. I have a cup of coffee every day. I'm so grateful for that. My cup of coffee every single day. I have coffee. That's pretty awesome. I have food to eat. Think about the things that you have that sustain you. But more than that, the things that not just sustain you, but the people around you that you have that love you. And not all of us may have the same amount of love and protection. And some of us may be grieving during this time. I spoke in my previous live video and set a prayer for, for those people that are in that grieving stage right now, grieving someone they love, because not everyone is feeling joyful today. Not everyone, even Christians, they're not feeling necessarily joyful today because they're missing the one they love. People are going through difficult times still. But I just think about when I take time to reflect in the mornings in the word of God, <laughs> when I think about Jesus when I read through the Gospels, when I read through Paul's letters, right now I'm in 1 Corinthians, just finished Romans. I am just so grateful that we have Jesus' words right in front of us every day that can encourage us. And remember, when you want prosperity, Jesus didn't have prosperity. And there's nothing wrong with obviously wanting to succeed. Absolutely. You know, there's goals that we can have in our lives. Absolutely. We can do that. But make sure that it's always for God's glory. Whatever you decide to do this coming year or continue to do or grow in, make sure that it is for God's glory. Always put it in God's hands. I just wanted to encourage you to remember Jesus. Remember what's important. And as you open your gifts this morning, and maybe at this time of this recording, you already have. Think about what Jesus got. got Jesus got these three gifts that were precious. Awesome. Of course, the baby Jesus didn't know what these gifts were. The, his parents knew, Mary and Joseph. but. Jesus got these three gifts in honor, in honor to honor him, to honor the son of God, despite the lowly circumstances. 
So when you give your gifts today, think about how you're honoring Jesus with your sacrifice And make sure to remember to give thanks today for the birth of Jesus, because without the birth of Jesus, we wouldn't have his life, his example, and of course, his sacrifice, which at the end of the day is really why we can be saved. So that's it for this week. Uh, For the end of the week, today is again, time of this recording is Saturday, Christmas Day. Um, I pray that you enjoy the rest of this day with your family and friends. And again, if you're alone, I prayed for you. I'll keep praying for you to feel God's presence in your heart and your life. Remember that you are not alone. Jesus is with you. And if you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer, or you're curious about Jesus, reach out. Reach out because just ask God to show you the way. The Bible says that when you seek me with all your heart in Jeremiah 29, you will find me. You will find me when you seek me with all your heart. God is there. He's just waiting for you to reach out. So I want to end with a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord God Almighty, creator of the heavens and earth, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for bringing him to this earth. Thank you for his birth. Thank you for his example. Thank you for Mary to to say, yes, thank you for Mary. What an example of a woman to say, I am your servant when the angel told her that she would give birth to the son of God. And what a willful, willful servant she was, despite what she thought people would think about her. She said, yes. And Joseph married her. He said, yes. He said, yes, to being Jesus stepdad and raising him to be an amazing young man, didn't be an amazing man here on earth. But more than anything, thank you, Lord, for how you guided him through this earth and you taught him so many, you've you've spoken through him and taught us so much. Lord, thank you so much. Again, be with all of those who are not feeling so cheery this morning. Help them to feel your presence. We love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas. Hey sister, if this episode encouraged or blessed you in some way, then the best thing you can do is share it with a friend. Also, I would love it if you join me in my Facebook community, Intentional Bible Study for Christian Women. There is an amazing sisterhood encouraging one another and praying for each other. And sister, if you've ever thought about connecting deeper with God through a consistent, powerful, and uniquely designed Bible study routine that works just for you and your time needs, look no further because I am your mentor and friend and your coach, and I can help you. All you need to do is write me at coachwithrosie at gmail.com. You can connect with me there, or you can check out theintentionalchristianwoman.com for more details. Lastly, if you haven't done so yet, I would invite you to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. This is the way that I know this show is blessing you. My sister, I love you, know that I'm praying for you, and I will see you in the next one.